Hey YouTube, Alicia here. I'm back with another review of The Real Housewives of Atlanta, Season 9, Episode 6. Let's get started. So we start off this week with Phaedra, and she's doing some interviews addressing the bomb threat that we saw last week. Now Phaedra's putting her own spin on it, and she's saying there actually was no bomb threat at all. She said she talked to Homeland Security, they also said there was no bomb threat, but what happened, what had happened was one of her clients named Drama came by with some new music. And supposedly he got confused and went to the wrong law office and said he was there to drop some bomb new CDs. So because of that, and because he went to a law office that wasn't Phaedra's and they were of a different persuasion, they got scared and misunderstood what he said and all of the shenanigans ensued. So then Phaedra goes into the, her whole spiel about now she wants to be sure that her family's safe, her business is safe, and so she calls in all of these people to help go through some security training. She calls the Nation of Islam, the 10,000 Fearless Men, and among others. And I'm thinking, if it was really no threat whatsoever, he was just a friend of yours and it was no big deal, why go through all this? Like, that's a lot to go through for a misunderstanding. Unless you have some other shady clients who truly are sick of your crap, why go through all the time and effort? So next we move on to Kenya. She's at her house and Cynthia comes over and Kenya's house is really coming together. It's looking a lot nicer. They rehash the conversation they had in the car last week when Kenya talks about Matt getting angry because of an Instagram photo. So we learned that Matt has still has not come back from California. Kenya still has the cake and she shows it to Cynthia. So like I said, they rehash it. Well, Cynthia talks about maybe Kenya needs to really think about not being in this relationship. So for some reason, Kenya seems really stuck on this relationship. Previously, we saw a stronger Kenya saying she's the one that ended it. Because Matt was unpredictable and violent, she ended it no problem. But now, she's reluctant. We haven't really seen Matt trying to earn his way back into her good graces. We saw them back in bed. But we don't, but for whatever reason, Kenya's still stuck on this guy, regardless of his violent ways. Then Kenya asks Cynthia about what, what's going on with her relationship troubles. And Cynthia kind of talks about how Peter's on this whole poor Peter tour. He's going on Wendy Williams. He's talking about how he was blindsided. He's doing the most. And basically, Peter's trying to hold on to that coin. He's chasing the coin. Because if he's really getting a divorce from Cynthia, he needs some money. So he's going to milk this reality show, ban whatever it is, for all it's worth until it's over. Cynthia says... Because he's doing all this, it kind of seems like they were divorced turning ugly, which is not what she wanted. So now it's time for the weekly check-in at the Old Lady Gang restaurant. Candy shows up and Todd's in there working on the restaurant. And she feels like the restaurant is taking too long and I think so too. But I've never built a restaurant. So basically Candy's stuck on the fact that they need to get this liquor license finalized and the restaurant has to be ready in order to get this liquor license. Todd is swearing he's going to have it done, but he also throws in the fact that he had to get rid of his general contractor because he wasn't doing things correctly. So now he's going to step in and be the general contractor and they have 45 days to finish this restaurant. 45 days? 45 days? That's quite kind of quick. Have y'all seen the restaurant, all the work that y'all have to get done? Todd is not a contractor. He's never done this before. How's it going to get done? But he's confident. He's saying he's going to get it done. A major investment they're going to be able to slap together in 45 days. So we'll see. So while Todd is working on the construction aspect of the restaurant, Candy is going to have a tasting with the chef. She's getting on to the fun part. So next, we move on to Portia. Portia's at home. Her mother's visiting. And Portia's looking through the website or something, looking for a new house. Her sister Lauren comes over with boxes and Portia lets us know that she needs to move out of her, her house because her lease is up and she has 45 days to move out. 45 days again, y'all. Noticing a theme this week? There's 45 days to get all this stuff done? Interesting. So Portia's another person who wants to make a major investment in 45 days. She's convinced she can buy a house in 45 days and be moved out, move, and be moved out of this house and into her new one. Now she explains to her mom and her sister that she's looking for a bigger house because she's thinking of a family. She's looking for expanding her, finally having this baby she's been talking about for a long time. So interestingly, her mom says, do you have a man? Is there a man in the picture? And Portia says there's a guy named Todd. And she says, you guys don't know him because I was dating him while I was dating another guy. 
So he was the side piece. So he had to stay on the under. But she swears to her parent, her mom and her sister that he's always wanted this relationship with her. He already has two kids. It's going to be great. Now, it didn't look that way last week that he really wanted a relationship with Portia because when she mentioned the baby to him and that she just wanted the baby, he was kind of like, whoa, you know, like, I'm not sure. He did kind of allude to the fact that he might want to be in there with her in a relationship, but it didn't come with a whole big enthusiastic pitch towards her, right? I guess we'll see what happens. And by the by, his last name is Stewart also. Interesting. So y'all, here comes Mama Joyce. She's back on her like, what was it, season five or six when she was really just doing the most, y'all. She's back. The old Mama Joyce is back. And this season, she has it in for Phaedra. She's decided Phaedra came for candy last season. So now it's time for her to come for Phaedra because payback, right? We see Mama Joyce going to see the lawyer. Good old Randy Kessler, famous R-H-O-A lawyer, the one who everybody goes to see except for Cynthia. So maybe Cynthia got a real divorce this time because she didn't go to see him like Nene did. But anyway, I digress. Mama Joyce goes to Randy because she's looking for validation. She already got some validation last week about her, her, um, her point about you have, if a person's in jail, you can get a divorce in two months. So she's going to Randy because she's really trying to get him to say, yes, you're right, Mama Joyce. He doesn't quite say that. He does say if somebody's in jail, it is easier to get a divorce. But he's quick to say it depends if it's if both people are in agreement, it's fast. And that's also the same if two people are not in jail. So he really didn't validate her point, but she felt like she like he did. So she's happy. She looks happy. That scene is interspersed with Phaedra talking to her mom about her divorce. And she's saying she wants a divorce. And Apollo, I guess, was originally on board. But now he started dragging his feet and he's dragging it out. And that's why she hasn't been able to get her divorce. So now it's time for Candy's taste testing. And she, invite, she invites the whole gang. Her aunts are there, Bertha and Nora, they come in, and they always look pissed off, don't they? Especially Bertha. Bertha's always looking mad. But she also has the rest of the gang. She has Portia and Sheree and Kenya and Phaedra, and her mom shows up as well. So they're all there for the tasting, and it's going fine. But right away, Sheree decides to call out Kenya on her slick comment about her hair from last week. Sheree tells Mama Joyce that Kenya was saying that Sheree's new shortcut, as she called that a shortcut, y'all, that fake bob wig madness that she had on. Thankfully, she didn't have it on this week. But Ed, I digress again. Sheree's telling Mama Joyce that Kenya referred to her wig, her wig as a tired old Mama Joyce wig. So, of course, Kenya lies her way out of it, says, no, I love your hair, I didn't say that. But they had a flashback showing that was almost a verbatim quote, Kenya, you're lying. So then Mama Joyce goes into it with Kenya, like, you don't want none of this, Kenya. Don't come for me unless I said for you, right? So that was cute. That was cute. So then Phaedra shows up. She shows up last, and Mama Joyce can't wait. She pounces on Phaedra. She's ready to just unload the knowledge that Randy Kessler dropped on her, right? Well, before she gets in too deep, Candy decides to come by and just kibosh the whole thing. And she separates the two, and she stops her at that point in time for that point for that topic. My bad, y'all. Cynthia was last, and she comes in with her big hair that she's been wearing for the last couple weeks. I'm all about the big hair, y'all. I'm an after hair girl. I got big hair too, but I feel like Cynthia's doing too much. I feel like it's just too wild and unkempt. I know a lot of people probably really love it, but I just feel like it's just too much. That's my opinion. I think it's too much. So not to be outdone, Mama Joyce is still not done messing with Phaedra. Somebody brought up the whole bomb threat at Phaedra's office and Phaedra tries to put the kibosh on it and poo-poo it. And so Mama Joyce said she heard that this guy went down there and said he was tired of being messed around by Phaedra and he was going to blow, blow the F place up. And so she said it like twice and everyone was shocked like what? And so of course Phaedra was like explaining it. No, there was no bomb threat and you know, Homeland Security said blah, 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 blah. And she denies the whole thing. But it was a cute kiki while it happened, but she shut it down. My question is, why is she protecting drama? Like, if this was a real thing, which we she has all this security and everything, so we know it wasn't like 100% fake, right? But why protect drama? I mean, yeah, that's her client. Is she afraid of him? Like, if she puts him in jail, will, will his peers come after her? I mean, it's kind of strange, right? It's kind of strange. Let me know in the comments below what you guys think about the situation. 
So now it's Sheree's time to start some mess. And she asks Candy, has she talked to Block lately? So Candy's just like, no, nah, I haven't talked to Block. Well, what do you mean? What do you mean? So she just says, oh, I just wanted to know. You know, she wants an update because Candy had confided in Sheree last week. So Candy doesn't really give up anything. She explains that Block wants to co-parent. That brings laughs from the table because Can Riley is kind of grown. So what is that about? So then Sheree turns to Portia and says, so did Block talk about Riley when y'all dated? And everyone around the table is just like shocked. Like, what? Did y'all date? It was crazy. Portia remained calm. She said, I just counted one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, nine, ten. And she calmly said, they didn't sleep together. They just dated. And he did, though, put it out that Candy was keeping Riley from him. So that must be either how Block feels or that has been his way of maintaining face in Atlanta. Because we know Atlanta's small and people talk and know everybody. So that must have been the spin he's been just uh, telling all these years. So then we have Cynthia going to see her lawyer again. She's worried about Peter going on this whole talk show circuit, bad mouthing her, saying he was blindsided, wham, wham, wham. And the lawyer says, you know, don't worry about it. Things are still moving along. I've talked to Peter and in 45 days, again, 45 days to 55 days, they will have their divorce and it'll be final. And so Cynthia is just like, wow, I hadn't really thought about what it'd be like not to be his wife. And I was thinking for real, sis, like uh, when you think about divorce, don't you think about life after but divorce, like, but maybe we don't. I've never been divorced. I don't know if you've been divorced in the comments below. Let me know what that was like for you guys. But I thought that was kind of strange. Like, I would have thought that was like a big decision. You think about long and hard, you know, I don't know. Like I said, I've not been down that road, so I'm not trying to judge anybody. Just thought it was un unusual to me. So here is the grand finale of this episode. It's a Kenya and Matt showdown. We start with Kenya they show footage of her garage door broken and she's crying and she's talking to Cynthia on the phone and she's saying it's not going well and she kind of talks about how Matt came over and kicked her garage door in and broke her glass. Finally, finally, because of the madness, Cynthia is listening to this and she's saying, wow, Kenya, this sounds like it's getting out of hand. She's getting alarmed by Matt's behavior, which is what I have been saying for weeks. This man has violent tendencies. Why isn't anybody talking to Kenya about staying with a guy who has violent tendencies? So she tells Kenya she might need to really reevaluate. He might, she might need to have some distance from him. You know, it's getting out of hand. So Cynthia, I mean, Kenya still is just like thinking, like pausing, like, because Cynthia says, are you afraid of him? She doesn't answer. She doesn't say, well, I take it back. She, she doesn't answer right away. She says she doesn't think he'll do anything to her. And honestly, I think a lot of victims of domestic violence think that initially. He won't really hurt me. Yeah, I've seen him beat up other people and do all, the, all these different things, but he won't touch me, right? Denial, I think. After Kenya talks to Cynthia, she starts talking to the producer and she's crying and she's letting her heart out and she doesn't know what to do and she's all this stuff. And I'm sitting here thinking, don't you have any friends? Call Aunt Lori. Why are you talking to the producer? I mean, I honestly, y'all, I don't want to not believe Kenya, but it's weird, right? It's weird. She's not 20 years old. This is not her first relationship. Why doesn't she know what to do? Like, I don't understand this. I think it's fodder for the show. That's just my opinion. So... Matt calls or she calls Matt. I can't remember. They talk. And he says, you know, before we end this, can I just apologize one more time if I promise to change? And I'm thinking, really? Come on now. So Kenya says, this is not the kind of conversation to have over the phone. I think we need to talk. And she tells him that the crew is wrapping up, that they're getting ready to leave. So he says, okay, I'll come over. Now y'all, I'm not a stranger to reality TV. They're not going to miss this. The crew's not going anywhere. They are like, crew, we got some overtime. Y'all need to go ahead and make your plans, cancel your plans, whatever you were doing. We need to get this scene. So we are not leaving, okay? So I'm thinking, all right, so she told Matt they're leaving. He's going to come pissed off that they're still there because no one wants to have a heart-to-heart -heart publicly if there's really some real stuff to talk about, right? So sure enough, Matt gets there. He's mad. He says, you said they were leaving. Why are they still here? And so Kenya, she's got her theatrics going. She's saying, this is who I am. This is who I, you know, 
Come on now, Kenya. You knew you told that man they were leaving. You should have said, look, I'm sorry. They are leaving. They're on their way out. We can wait. If you want to wait a half an hour, we can still talk. But no, she needed her scene too, y'all. I'm convinced that she is using Matt for a storyline. And here is why. Matt is beyond angry. And one of the things he says to her is that she needs to quit treating him like he's disposable. So how is that, right? If you're being used for a storyline, you're disposable. She, he says she talks to him crazy, like a farm animal on the daily. She doesn't treat him nicely. And she is just not hearing anything he is saying. Matt says that he told her he was done with all of this, referring to the cameras and whatever, before he went to California. He was done. He wasn't coming back from California. So she already knew what was up. So then he says she sent him the sweetest text luring him back in, right? Luring him back in because she can't be without a storyline, right? Kenya calls him going to California running. He goes, yeah, I was going to run. But it's also the fact that he ended it, Kenya. You said I broke up with him when he kicked in on my door in the hotel room, but he ended it with you before he went to California. So really, what's really going on? So y'all, they get nowhere. Matt is saying he doesn't want to talk in front of the cameras. Kenya's saying, you've done a lot of dirt to me. You're making me look crazy. He's saying, you know what? And, and I think he made an excellent point, y'all. I hope y'all are paying attention. I hope y'all are listening. Kenya said that Matt is making her look bad. But he says she's making him look bad because she acts like he does all these things all of a sudden, out of the blue, kicking in her door and all these things. But he says she's poking him from the side. She's needling him. She's doing all these things. And I'm not saying that anybody in domestic abuse deserves what they get or they have somehow been responsible for it. But what he's saying is... It isn't like I just did it out of the blue. Like, you're pushing me. You're needling me and whatever. And I, it's a reaction. Yes, it's a bad reaction. He said, I'm a young man and I throw things and do this kind of thing. That's my bad. But it isn't that you're totally innocent here. You're also doing things. And so he says that she is disrespectful with her mouth. And he said her mouth causes things to escalate. Didn't we see that on the reunion when Portia dragged her, her mouth causing her to cause this whole situation to get out of control? We, we saw the situation escalate. So he even says, this is the line, as long as he doesn't touch her, she can run her mouth like crazy. And that was her whole argument, even with the whole dra Portia dragging her thing. I never touch Portia. Portia can't control herself. Your mouth is just as abusive as hands. And Kenya doesn't get that. And even when Matt made that point, she still didn't acknowledge it. She, did, she still didn't accept it at all. Matt called her manipulative and fundamentally deceptive and said goodbye. He basically said goodbye. He wasn't gonna, he actually did say goodbye. He's trying to close the door on her. She's still trying to argue with him. He's trying to get out of there. He doesn't want it to escalate. He doesn't want to give her more fodder for the show. So Matt is done. And that is it for this week. That is how the episode ended. We see Matt peeling off down that ditch, getting out of Dodge. He said, no more, not today. We're not going there, Kenya, not anymore. So we'll see what happens next week. Next week, it looks like there's some more scenes of her and him and her dad or whatever. So I don't know, y'all. He is in his 20s. He's kind of young. I think if she really was with a man who was in his 40s like her, he would not have done with half of this stuff. It's a maturity thing, as she says. But she's actually getting lucky that he's immature because he's actually still getting caught up in her games. So what did you guys think of this week's episode, y'all? I'm interested in hearing your opinion. Y'all heard what mine is. I thought it was a pretty good show, pretty good episode. I'm looking forward to seeing what the next week has, to, uh, has in store. So let me know in the comments below what you thought. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Be sure to come back, you guys. Share it with your friends. Be sure to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss out on any of these reviews. I hope you have a wonderful week, and I'll see you the next time. Bye.